Okay, so in this lesson, which is Unit 3, ENCODE.org, Computer Science Discoveries, Lesson 14, we are going to learn about something called conditionals. So conditionals are statements and things that will only run when certain conditions are true. So if the conditions are right, if the conditions are true, then the conditionals will run. Um, Boolean expressions and programming are expressions that evaluates to true or false. It can either be true or false. It can't be. Um, so a condition is a something that's in the program that checks to see whether it's true um, before deciding to take an action as a conditional. All right. So our new code that we'll be learning are if statements. If statements are when we are looking, if this is true, then we will do something. And we have equality operators, inequality operators, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Sounds a lot like math class, doesn't it? All right, so we're gonna hit continue. Let's see what this looks like. So in the very first one, if I remember right, we are looking at a prediction, yes. We want to read the code below and try to predict what will be printed in the console, which is down here at the bottom, by the program. So when we read this, what will be printed? So variable one, sprite one, is created at 100, 200. Sprite two, is created at 300, 200. Remember, that's our X and Y coordinates. So this says console log, which means it's gonna print it down here. Sprite one, that's weird that there are two equal signs, but I'm guessing that means equals, really equals. Sprite two is Y. So if this is X, this is Y. This is saying that their Y's are the same. I'm going to guess that that means true. Are there, is the x value of sprite 1 greater than sprite 2? And the x value of sprite 1 is not greater than sprite 2, so that one would be false. And the x of sprite 1 is less than, so that is true. So true, false, true is what I am predicting. In fact, that's what I selected up there. We're gonna run it. And it says true, false, true down here in the console. Okay, and it drew the sprites on the screen. And they're boring rectangles because they were never assigned an animation. Da -da -da. Or set animation. Okay. So that was weird, looking at things being as true and false. This is a really important video to watch. Um, I can't stress enough that you should pause my video and go watch the video found in uh, Diamond Bubble 3. And I would go ahead and watch the second video bubble in Bubble 7. That way maybe you don't have to pause my video at one time, but there are two videos. They are very important. All right, so hopefully you watched the video that Felicia just showed you from code.org, where she introduced you to the different conditional operators. And so now we're going to um, match the Boolean expression to the English description. So here's what we would say in regular old English, and this is what would be typed into the computer as a Boolean expression. Is the dog's sprite rotation less than the cat's sprite rotation? So I'm looking at the one with rotation. And this says dog rotation less than cat rotation. So that matches. Is the dog sprites X 
less than the cat's sprite x. So in this case, we have lots of x's. So we're looking for the one that says, is the dog's sprite x less than? And the less than symbol, I always feel like it looks like a L, capital L that's sort of been squished over, and but it still has the point on the right side. So that would be our less than. Is the dog sprite scale greater than the cat sprite scale? Well, there's only one with scale. And that says dog scale is greater than cat scale. Is the dog sprite x greater than cat? Is the dog sprite x equal to? All right, those look good. If we say this one, yay, that is correct. Hopefully you were able to do that on your own and you didn't need to be watching my video for help with that. So moving right along to bubble five. And, and that, in case you are watching this video just for fun, for some strange reason, um, remember that you ideally should do these on your own and just use this video as a resource for when you're stuck. So I'm on bubble five. This program draws a race car and a finish line. We want to figure out when the race car crosses the finish line. It's all been set up for us. Okay. Add a console log statement inside the draw loop. I like that it says show me where. Put the console log statement here, right there. Okay. Add the console log statement inside the draw loop. Add a Boolean expression inside the console log that asks, is the X position of the race car less than the X position of the finish line? So if the value of the race car is less than the value of the finish line, then we know. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. We're going to put the console there. That is this one right here. Now we want to add a Boolean expression. that ask, is it less than, so we want to put operator in here, is the X position of the race car less than the X position of the finish line? So looking up here, finish line, it's just like it says. Let's see if that's what we're looking for. All right. False, 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 now it's true. When did the output change? It changed when where the x value is considered less than the x value, which is right in the middle, when the middle of the car crosses the middle of the finish line. Because that is where the x values, they're measured from the middle. All right. All right, let's move along. Da, da, da. Continue. Level six, if an if statement. Boolean expressions allows us to ask questions. 
But in order to use those questions to change the program's behavior, we need an if statement. Read the code for this race car program. What will the program do when the car reaches a finish line? So we still have same car, same finish line. So we, the race car, oh, notice it in the console log. If the race car is less than 100, which means right here, no, right here, So this is my 100 when the middle of this car reaches the 100 right now, there. We should see one. Why is the if block inside there? So that when the car reaches where x is equal to 100, the console log will say winner. Um, it provides Every time he's looking through the draw loop, every time the race car is drawn and he moves to the left at two pixels per loop, um, if he's not less than 100, it just keeps right on going. And then, but when he comes and the center of that car reaches right about there, suddenly in the console log it says, hey, you're a winner. All right. Again, we have a video here to watch. Felicia is going to talk to us about when you would want to use an if statement. Um, I highly suggest conditionals are new, very new, so you need to watch this video. If I try to play it, it will be terrible quality. So I'm going to give you a chance to pause and go watch Felicia as she explains this time. All right, so I hope that you watched the uh, short video, two minute video about conditionals and learned about how you can use those Boolean expressions to make things happen um, and make them interactive, make your programs respond to different um, criteria, depending on what you're looking for. All right. We're going to look at a couple more things, and then we will be finishing up Lesson 14. All right. Now that we know how to use if statements, you can do more than just check if an apple has reached a scale of 2. You can turn it into a pear. Of course, that's what I've always wanted to do, is turn my apple into a pear. All right. Apple, 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 getting bigger, bigger, bigger. When it gets to a scale of two, it's going to boop into a pair. Right? Oh, no, that's what we want it to do. Okay. So right now it is not doing that. Right now it's just staying an apple. All right, so reset. We want to put in a conditional, which is like an if statement into the draw loop. So remember if we'll put in a boolean expression, boolean expression here. If the fruit scale is greater than two. So we want to use the greater than the fruit scale. is greater than 2. If it is, change the animation to a pair. So we use the set animation. And we're going to change it from a fruit to apple to the pear. All right. If the fruit scale is greater than 2, then we run what's in here. If it's not true, then it will ignore this particular command or conditional. So 
So boom, boom, boom. Apple, apple, apple. Apple, 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 apple. Is it going to change to a pear? There it is. Now we have a pear. Lovely. All right. That's how we do it. That was fun. All right. We've got some Boolean expressions here. Change the price property so that all of the Boolean expressions evaluate to true. Hmm. Okay. Don't edit the following. I'm serious. That's funny. All right. Modify these sprites so that all of the console log commands print true. All right. We're not changing anything down here, but those are things that we might want to read. That's what the console log is looking for. But we modify these up here. Okay. That's funny. All right. So the first console log that we are comparing is Sprite2's x is equal to Sprite y. And we want it to be true. Both we want the x to be equal to the y. The x of Sprite 2, which is 200, no, sorry, 300, to be equal to the y of Sprite 1. So let's make that 300. All right, I'm going to reset it. Let's see if the comparison 1 is everything's false, though. Okay, that didn't work. Let's see what I didn't read well. X. Oh, these are both the same sprite. Okay. Sprite 2 is equal to sprite 2. X and Y are the same. Let's go back up here again. I'm going to reset my version history. In case I messed something up. And we're going to look at Sprite 2, and we want to make these both the same. So there. Now they're the same. Sprite 2 rotation should be less than 40. Sprite 2 rotation right now is 60, so let's make it 35. Sprite 1 scale is equal to Sprite 2 scale. So these two guys should have the same scale. That one's 0.5, this one's 1.5. Now let's split in the middle and just make them one. And there is no wrong or right way to, or there's a lot of wrong ways to do it. There's no one right way to do this. You, we could have done them all to 0.5 or to 1.5. Let's see. We want the sprite one's x value to be greater than 150. Sprite 1 x to be greater than 150. So let's make it 1. Okay. And we want Sprite 2's y value to be less than 200. Okay. So if this is going to be less than 200, Let's make it 185. And if you remember back at the very beginning when you wanted these to be the same, so Sprite 2x and y have to be the same. All right, now I'm going to draw it. Our goal is to modify them so that all of the Boolean expressions evaluates to true. We can look down here in our little console. And they are indeed all true. So we don't really care about the pictures this time. We're just looking for true statements.
dropped soup, empty the soup bowl when it turns upside down. Interesting. Right now, when the soup bowl turns upside down, it defies gravity. We want it to spill out. So let me move this. Actually, I'm just going to close this. We want it to disappear like that. Okay. So this is going to require an if then. All right. Notice we're going to have it rotate. And then we need a Boolean expression if the rotation is adding each time. So it starts at zero. We know that it faces this way at 90. We know that upside down is 180. So somewhere around 180. And if it's greater than We're going to do the soup rotation. Hopefully we'll get this right. No soup for you if we do not get it right. All right, soup rotation greater than, let's say 175. Reset. Oh no, we got to make it do something. All right, so we need to set the animation to an empty bowl of soup. Hopefully they've already picked it out. Just a bowl, yep. It was stew, now it's a bowl. Hopefully we did that right. All righty. Sure. All right. I think that's good enough. Um, we could even do it at probably 170. It's, the bowl is tipping by that point. Okay. Good enough for me. And then the last one is an alien celebration. Make the alien dance when the spaceship takes off. They're going to party. Spaceship takes off. When it reaches the top of the screen, we want the alien to dance around. All right. So... The spaceship is decreasing in value by three. The Y value is decreasing, which means that it's going up. Opposite sometimes of what we think. Negative Ys move up the screen, positive Ys go down. When the spaceship reaches the top of the screen, set the an alien's animation to alien dance. Okay, so let's do that. If let's see here. So the top of the screen will be when the Y is, I reckon, zero. So let's try that. Space ship Y is less than zero because it's going to keep moving even once it gets to the screen. When that happens, it says to set the animation of the alien. Instead of alien standing, we want him to be alien dance. A feeling over here in the animation that Alien Dance already has the different frames built in. Excellent. Uh oh. There we go. All right, let's try it. 
spaceships going up. There he goes, he's dancing. Excellent. All done. So that was the last of the uh, bubbles that I'm going to work through with you on. As bubble number 10 is the assessment level. If you've understood all of the previous bubbles, especially the last couple, then you will be doing just fine. You want to make the dinosaur turn into a pterodactyl when it reaches the sky, because we all know that, ter that dinosaurs like T-Rexes can't fly. But when it reaches the sky, it will turn into a pterodactyl. Okay, you can see that they're moving it up for you. They've already put in that code. You just have to put in the conditional. If you finish the assessment and you have time, um, visibility, visibility challenge looks kind of cool. Um, you can hide something for a while and then show it again. You look at this balloon, it's going to pop. There we go. <laughs> so that is something you can play around with if you have time. I hope that you have fun on this level, learning about conditionals. Take the time to understand it. Make sure you do go back and watch the videos if you did not. Um, and just really take the time to understand those if statements because they are so important in programming and they're important in life. If you do your work and submit your assignments and do well on them, you will get a higher grade, right? If, if statements happen all the time. If you eat your dinner, then you can have dessert. If you go to bed on time, then you will feel good in the morning. Um, computers are just like us in that way. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.